or some tool to make these interfaces and before engineering i was into film making so i knew photoshop i used to make movie posters so i thought mm-hmm. this is a nice intersection between creativity and tech that is how i got entered into ux sorry can we do the intro again uh, there was some problem with the live okay so starting from the beginning cool 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 okay um hello guys uh, i chirag and i am antika welcome you to the second episode of spartan stop so today's guest we have ansh mehra an engineer turned ux designer who also runs his own podcast called take it easy on spotify he interned at swiggy as a product designer and is now working with his friends to create a completely new virtual event hosting platform called zadl welcome in this webinar in this webinar ansh will be giving us insights about his life as a product designer journey as a vitn placement tips and about his podcast which has successfully evolved two amazing seasons hello welcome welcome hi how are you amazing so what so how was this transition like how did it happen from like an engineer to a ux designer so i think i share the same story with a lot of other self taught designers uh you would see a specific app you would watch a specific movie or poster and feel like replicating that one single item so when i was in vit when i was a fresher or maybe in second year i attended one of the hackathons that happened in sjt and i saw that all of these people are using photoshop to design the interfaces before they go on to develop the application before engineering i was into film making i used to make a lot of movies and movie posters so i knew how photoshop worked so i thought that great i don't know a lot of coding but i do know photoshop so let's just mm-hmm. try collaborating with a developer and making some interfaces mm-hmm. and that led like that was the first uh, experience into ux and ever since then i've been in love with the subject so backstage you told us that you uh, you tried a lot of other uh, domains as well so what made you stick to ux as such i think uh, you just know when you're not good at something i tried ai i tried ml i tried block chain css html javascript anything that you would hear about i tried it because you see a lot of these people in college who are way more smarter than you and you get very intimidated by these people and to enter that group of smart kids you need to bring something to the table so they won't let you in their group unless you are good at something so i was trying everything one by one and when i entered this field of design i realized that it is very thought provoking it is at the consumer end because you're not doing things uh in assumptions it is very reality driven so you will design something which is meant for the customer if it fails you go and talk to the customer that why is it not happening because when you are coding when you're building a database you haven't faced the customer yet but when you are designing interfaces you're finally facing the customer and that was very exciting for me and when you're a designer you are a lot of people believe that they are more excited about a specific product when they are in the core team so as a designer i am exploring every single aspect of a software from the sign up page to log in to check out downloading uploading everything so i just enjoy that depth of involvement in whatever i do so this might seem a little technical but like if any of us wanted to pursue a career in ux design what do you think could be like a good starting point so the first step is to understand the software the easiest software is figma it's an online tool completely free of cost mm-hmm. to learn figma you just need to go to youtube and check out figma's youtube channel that is their software's official youtube channel and you just need 100 hours i'm not even kidding like you just need yeah. 100 hours to learn the entire software and become very good at it if you get bored after 12 hours then you're not for it i mean with if you you feel some resistance in the first 12 hours because it will be very intimidating for you but even after spending 12 hours if you don't feel like doing it it's not for you and if you want to become good at it you just need 100 hours so uh i've i've heard this common misconception like people have told me this that you're color blind so you cannot become a designer and <laughs> you told me that you're color blind too so what what does that actually see i think uh, in ux it is very less about i mean visual design is a part of ux but 
in small small startups or for example the company that i'm working in right now they are very functionality driven at least initially so it doesn't matter if your shade of blue is a little here and there or if you mix up a few oranges or reds because in the end what matters is what is the user experience and that is more about the flow the information architecture the hierarchy the decisions where you have to include a specific feature or remove a specific feature so i don't think color plays a very important role in that and i think now because i have been color blind for so long i think i now recognize colors properly so earlier i must have been getting confused between shades of blue but now i know how these colors look so now yeah. i understand the true color lingo as well so i don't face too many problems now that's great yeah so um, you're from vit as well did like vit play any role in getting you here like right now where you are definitely i i think uh, these four years of your life really shape your mindset and vit has allowed me to ex- you know explore all these hackathons that vit had vit has so many hackathons that there is massive opportunity for every single student there is so much that you can do vit sponsored my first trip to mit when i competed at hack mit and then i came back i collaborated with a few friends i again went to harvard in the next two months and uh, what i made at harvard we didn't win at harvard but then during hack harvard i met a specific person from microsoft who told me about microsoft imagine cup we came back again worked at vit then went to sydney in february so there is a lot that that can happen and you can't predict any of this because you have to be at spot a to go to spot b i would never know about imagine cup if i wasn't at hack howard at that specific moment so you think that vit has just basic hackathons but that hackathon that one single hackathon can open hundreds of doors for you if you know how to make use of that yeah. opportunity yeah and uh, what about clubs and chapters did they also have a role yeah i was i was in one single club that is i triple e vit uh i think clubs are super important because you interact with a lot of people and interacting with people is a very important skill i mean half of the results that you produce in your life are due to your negotiations and handling people and you learn how to handle people when you study psychology and the best way to learn psychology is to react and act and actually understand how people function so just sitting in yeah. your room or uh, developing or coding will take you to level 10 or level 12 but to take things to the next level you need to interact with people and that is very easy when you're in a specific club because through that club you meet people from other clubs so it becomes a network yeah. of different yeah, clubs yeah, yeah. i agree clubs and chapters actually give you quite a big platform actually for exposure yeah. and stuff and i think backstage you're telling us that achievements don't really matter once you leave college so what do you what do you say about like do marks and achievements really matter that much or like so there there is a, a misconception about people saying that only marks matter in my opinion the person that you become when you score those marks and get those achievements i think that sticks with you because uh, and this is what i've noticed even if you go back to your school days uh, for a person who has has scored maybe 90 plus percent and if you compare with a person who has scored maybe 70 plus percent you will realize that there's a sharp difference in their approach towards not in even studies their approach towards a lot of other things whether it's their sleep cycle whether it's their discipline so i'm not saying that a person who's studying less or who's getting low marks is inferior or superior that is not the priority here the question is that these behavior patterns they stick with you so right now you might be taking your studies leniently in few years later you will take your body very leniently then you will start taking your friendships very leniently you will start taking your finances very leniently and soon things will fall out of your hands so you should study but not make it about marks make it about the person that you're becoming when you're studying for that big exam the person that you become when you're getting that trophy because that person sticks with you the trophies and all everyone will forget about that yeah but then uh, i feel that sometimes it gets really hard to balance uh, both your extra curricular as well as your marks so you know uh, do you think there is some way where you can uh, efficiently balance the two of them see i think getting marks or even winning 
a specific competition when we talk about extra curricular it's about learning something and then performing some plays and winning something so the truth is that we do not know if we will win or not it mm-hmm. winning is not a science and i was discussing the same thing with someone else like in chemistry if you mix two compounds together you'll get a specific result because it is science winning is not scientific you might do the same things again and again but you might not win because of thousands of other reasons which were not in your control mm-hmm. so you can only control one thing and this is what i and my teammates saranch we always discuss in every single hackathon saranch and i have been together since inception since the first hackathon and our goal is to be a strong competitor like i don't i don't enjoy the trophy but i enjoy that feeling when i am entering the room and everyone knows that this guy is going to come with something awesome right so i want people to say look at my product and say that he is not a soft player he is a strong competition and that you can control and that habit also sticks with you winning is definitely not in your control so in extra curriculars make sure that you not focus too much on winning but being a strong competitor and towards the academic side a lot of people approach subjects in the wrong way getting marks is also a technical process you need to understand what are your strengths in a specific subject you need to allocate time you need to work on your physical body your mental body and even the food that you eat because it affects your memory in a very substantial way so if your memory and your body are not in alignment with you you will not be able to perform at your optimal level you can anyway perform at any physical level but if you really want to achieve you have to make sure that your body and your mind are with you mm-hmm. yeah so you also run your own podcast right take it easy on spotify so tell us more about it so uh, when i reached third year or fourth year of my college life i just felt like there was a lot of stuff that i could have known before i entered college and for a single child like me who didn't have many siblings or uh, my parents were not from a scientific background i just felt that there was a lot of stuff that could have been conveyed so i thought i'll collect all my insights put them together in a notepad file and put it there on spotify for anyone who might need help okay so we have a few questions from other people from our audience one yeah. of the first, uh, is it a big problem if you are in part of a technical club in bit like there are a lot of you new know, cultural clubs as well is it important to be part of a technical club like no matter what it depends on what you want to do so if you are planning to approach a career in technical subjects if you want to become a developer or a programmer once you get out of college then being in a technical club will help you but being in a technical club is not compulsory because you can learn the same thing sitting in your own room or maybe when you go back home in your holidays so some people have an approach where they would balance their socializing by being a part of a cultural club and then balance their technical aspect by practicing in their room it is your yeah. priority because you want 50 50 some people don't want to socialize they want all aspects to be technical so it all depends on your priorities sure um can you tell us a little bit about the current and what you think will be the future design trends i think ar vr is going to be super awesome when i see the stuff that they're doing in ar vr it just blows my mind and i've been trying to learn ar vr for a very long time but it 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 just has that inertia you know when you try to learn something in the beginning you have that resistance so i'm still struggling with that resistance i'm learning blender right now it is a free <laughs> open source 3d tool it is an amazing software so yeah mm-hmm. just figuring out that stuff is my video all right because it's lagging on my screen it's lagging a bit but it's your voice is clear so that's good enough right okay one second should i open the door yeah 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 go ahead go ahead so i'm not sure what's okay. happening but my voice is clear right yeah yeah it's really clear yeah all right cool okay so um what uh you all you also you're uh, working on zadl right like the yeah. virtual event so tell us a little more about it as well so uh zadl is an online platform 
where we host many kinds of events it could be a corporate event it could be a product launch it could be a meet up we have different themes so we have different state skins different layouts there's an expo area there's a networking section so it's everything that we had in offline events and uh, we just wanted people to access big big events even if they're not in the same city or maybe if they're traveling or maybe they're on the go and in offline events it becomes very difficult for you to personally network with everyone so we have made specific features and functionalities in zazzle that make that networking process very easy and you get to meet a lot of people in a very short amount of time mm-hmm. so we have a lot of exciting stuff ready to be announced I'm, we are still waiting for the right time we might announce by mid of december so yeah super pumped about that mm-hmm. and um how what is your exact approach to uh, zadel the ux of zadel basically so so uh, i started working for zadel uh, i knew very little about hands on experience and i i feel super lucky that the guy like both veda and bharat the founders co-founders they trusted me with the product because i'm the only uh, ux designer now we have a bit help but in the beginning it was only me so it was very intimidating to cover the entire I'm sorry yes can you hear me yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so uh, in the beginning i used to make screens without much thought but as time went by as i started communicating with the developers as i started uh, you know hearing all these questions and doubts and queries I realized that there is so much more to learn. So I spent a lot of time learning from Figma's YouTube channel. Like I've spent hours and hours, seven to eight hours every single day, just learning and learning. And now that I see my designs today, there's a massive improvement in four or five months. And I feel very happy. And you can't get this sort of an experience without being in a startup because when when you're in a startup, you grow with the product. So it's like raising your own child. I mean, it is obviously not nearly as difficult as raising a human child, but <laughs> but it's like you you start with a mini product, and as the product grows, your skills also grow with the product. So it's it's an amazing experience working with a new product. So, uh, is there like any good design that you think every designer should know, like something that you found out while you started working in UX? Uh, I think uh, for learning. and for inspiration there are many different plugins and youtube channels uh, i personally follow my mentor who's uh, saptarshi he's working with swiggy right now saptarshi prakash and i would recommend everyone to check out his youtube channel then there is abn ux uh, abhinav's channel abhinav also runs this uh, website called ui sources where you can check out many many phone applications and interactions and screenshots so rather than downloading every single app i have that membership so i continuously see what's happening in the app market and then there are many plugins like uh, i think the plugin is muzli it's muzli plugin where every single day it it emails me all the nice things that are happening in the design circuit so some a very awesome website or a specific interaction to just keep me updated and on youtube there is this channel called refactoring ui amazing channel it is it is beyond amazing it teaches you how to quickly improve a website's interface with very very small uh, small small cosmetic changes how they can compound and completely change the experience and yeah figma's youtube channel i think those people are the best at teaching ui Uh, but do you think that a uh, UX design is a job uh, that you have to keep updating yourself? You have to stay in, uh, uh, you know, you know, you have to know what the trends are. Do you think it's a job like that? No, it's not just for UX. I think in any job you need to be updated because yeah. I was just watching this yeah, interview yeah, yeah. Uh, by Naveen Jain, and he said something like, "You will either ride the wave or get crushed by it." So uh, the time is. is so dynamic because of internet everything is happening at such a fast speed that if we don't keep up with the trends we will eventually realize that we are losing out so not to say this in a very pressurizing way but you have to keep yourself updated because that keeps you inspired otherwise monotony itself will 
uh, get you bored. Mm -hmm. So if you were like, if you had to tell something to yourself, like when you started off B Tech, is there anything you do different to, like you know? Actually, as for... uh, actually, I won't say anything to my previous self because I don't want to change anything that happened in the past because I am happy about where I am. I am happy about all the experiences that I had because you learn from your mistakes. So even if I had lived one hour differently, I wouldn't be here. So. You you can't you I don't advise anyone to go back and say anything to yourself because you will never learn that amount of experience from anyone else's mistake and I talk about this on the podcast as well that I in every single episode I tell these people that you can listen to me and you can pick what is compatible to your situation but nothing can replace your own mistakes nothing. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yeah, yeah. So there's some questions which some people have asked in the chats, like how did you prioritize your tasks when you were in college? Like you were working on like, you know, other stuff apart from academics as well, right? So right. did you balance that out? Uh, the first thing is that I, I had very few friends, to be honest. So, and uh, I don't do a lot of gaming. I watch movies, but I watch them only while I'm eating. So. Uh, I have a lot of time every day. I actually have a lot of time on my hand. And how do I prioritize? I don't, to be honest. I, I do whatever I feel like doing. There is no specific timetable. But I do have a checklist. I have a checklist of things that are very important to me. So if I have an exam, I will not do any design. Or yeah. if I have a submission coming up, I focus only on the sub submission. But there is no... Uh, time allocation as such but i do have a checklist always there's a checklist yeah yeah so yeah. i've seen that uh, while applying for internships in ux design a lot of these internships they ask you for a degree in a degree or a certification in ux yeah. so uh, how how easy or hard is it to get these internships no the times are changing they no longer ask you for your degree they ask you for your work because now a lot of people are realizing that it is the person who's going to deliver the result and uh, not a specific degree. So it is very important that you have your own personal website or your Behance profile where you upload a lot of good work. And when you approach a specific client, you need to show that work. So that work can consist of case studies, your own site projects, your own freelance projects, some revamp work, personal projects, whatever. But degree is not that important, but you have to be good at what you do. There is no other replacement for that. So what do you think are like some common mistakes that you make like as a designer or just as a student or anything? See, I think uh, there are hundreds and millions of common mistakes. How can you avoid those mistakes? First is you need to develop awareness. How can you develop awareness? There are two kinds of awarenesses. One is technical and the other is non-technical. In technical awareness, you need to understand how the software works and what is the lingo of the design industry. So for the software, there is YouTube. And for lingo, I would recommend everyone to read. Read blogs. There is There are blogs by InVision. There are blogs by Figma, by Sketch. All these big, big design tools, they regularly have their blogs. So read as much as you can and enhance your vocabulary enhance the lingo that you use and get to know the software then there are non-technical things that you need to build your awareness on most importantly being your communication skills how do you speak how fluently can you speak do you have faith in yourself because if you don't have faith in yourself outsiders will never have faith on you so the first step is to believe in yourself second is negotiations I would strongly recommend everyone to buy this book called Never Split the Difference. Uh, it is an amazing book on negotiations. Underline everything that you learn and reread it again and again. You need to know how to negotiate. And not even, uh, I'm not just talking about design in specific. Everything in our life is a negotiation if you think about it. Like even telling your parents about your future plans, talking to your friends, even asking for a specific product. Everything is about negotiations. And if you're not negotiating well, it becomes very difficult for you to get what you want. 
and small small topics i would recommend everyone to check out nlp not natural language processing there's something called uh, neuro linguistic programming mm-hmm. uh, which deals with how communication can influence the way a person in front of you thinks about you or thinks about a specific product like all these products that we buy all these expensive clothes and gadgets we don't need them right if you think about it but we are believed to think that we need them how does that happen it is because of perception so how do you build perception that is a part of nlp so tiny tiny things that everyone should explore okay yeah yeah my back Right. So, um, I I wanted to ask you like before before the start of this interview, I I had a look uh, about uh, I had a look at your website because you said it was really important to uh, create a website of your own, and I think it's really commendable how you have created a personal brand for yourself. <laughs> and if if you were to guide someone to do the same, what would you tell them? Uh five six things. Uh, first is before creating any brand. work on yourself work on the skills because don't you shouldn't have a bubble brand you know it shouldn't be a facade that aapne branding achhi kar li website achhi bana li sab kuch acha bana liya but when it comes to delivering the result you are not able to deliver that kind of a result so spend one or two years just working on your skills there is plenty of time in life to show off plenty you know but there is very less time on our hands to work on ourselves because as you grow up responsibilities build up soon your parents will expect you to pay the bills soon you know stuff will happen you will get involved in college no one is disturbing you in college no one is expecting you to pay the bills or take care of the house so i think a lot of people wouldn't be taking care of the house but there are a lot of cases where as soon as you come back home from college you are expected to do stuff so in college work on yourself as much as you can build your brain build your mindset read as much as you can and after a certain point after 22 start working on your physical body and your communication skills and your confidence and if you're earning invest in your clothing invest in gadgets invest in things that directly affect your lifestyle mm-hmm. small small things even the body wash that you use even the perfume that you use even the cars that you hang around with all of these things will not affect the customer it won't affect your brand it will affect your own perception about yourself which is the most important thing ever your perception yeah. about yourself matters the most and once you start working on that stuff soon the world will have its own brightened perception of you but yeah it's a step by step process first just build your skills first and generate a source of income most things come down to your income if you have income to fund a good lifestyle only then you can buy for yourself and build this perception and build a website and have time but without finances without capital life can become very stressful so you have to make sure that you have a specific skill that can take care of your capital requirement i mean there's a lot of times that you feel intimidated by people around you so what really you know i don't know about you but i feel really intimidated by other people sometimes you know that they're so much better than me what motivates you to like get through all that like do you have anything that particularly motivates you yeah yeah even i get intimidated by a lot of people all the time i think this is a part of our human nature to feel a little bit of you know fear you know have a little little sort of this uh, thought in our mind that we might not be able to win this or we might not be cool enough to be a part of this so that happens you know and i think uh, rather than running away or being scared of it let's just face it and figure out how we can fix it so what i do is first thing is that i realize that everyone has flaws even your top most role model will have flaws i have so many flaws it's just that i don't post about them on social media i only post about the good stuff so no one will ever know right it's all about perception earlier i used to post about flaws and all of these things and then i realized that people like to be lied they want to live in that fantasy world where everyone is so smart and very poised the reality is that as soon as someone tastes blood they are in a completely different shape or form like if you take away money from a specific if you keep a person hungry only then you can see that person's true form so whatever that we're seeing on social media it's not even real so the person 
that you're getting intimidated by that is a facade everything that is yeah. intimidating you is a facade it's a smoke screen so when you realize that everything that is scaring me is an illusion you finally stop that temptation to have that fear that temptation goes away and secondly when you start working on yourself when you think changes in yourself it really helps a lot um i think in a lot of creative fields uh, the work you do is a reflection of who you are so do you think it is the same with ux design as well because yeah 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 definitely i think uh, but in ux it might be less but the podcast is completely me it is it is 100% me it is completely unfiltered i don't edit the audio i do write a script but i have spoken about a lot of topics actually there are so many episodes now and i've spoken yeah. on a lot of topics that are very important so yeah i think it does it has a part of my own heart and soul into the episodes and uh youtube doesn't have my movies anymore i have only one movie on youtube which was made by me it's called carbonated that i made it 12 uh, apart from that every single trailer that i used to make as a kid used to be super heavy like aag nikal rahi hai ye ho raha hai chhe toot rahe hai drums mar rahe hai heavy heavy stuff i used to make heavy stuff and even my friends say that i'm very heavy in conversation because i just like heavy stuff so i think yeah that reflects in my work that whatever i do is extra it is over extra <laughs> so i think that's about it i don't think we really have any other questions as such All right. so Yeah, Chirag. So, before we leave, we'll just like to play a small oh, yeah. interview. So I, I have yeah. scrapbook as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Avantika, do you have a pen and a paper? Yeah, yeah, I have it. Yeah, yeah. cool. Uh, so, so the game is sketch libs, and how we're gonna play is uh, I'm going to take a suggestion from each one of you, and Avantika is gonna ask me a question, so I can give my suggestion as well, and I will construct a line that we will have thirty seconds. to draw it out and then we have to explain what we have drawn okay so let's start with uh, ansh what is your favorite animal a uh, tiger okay uh, avantika what's your favorite sport sport badminton okay badminton okay. so what's your favorite place to hang out like just a circus circus okay okay so the sentence is a tiger playing badminton at a circus and your time starts just give me a second yeah and your time starts now okay this is so weird how <laughs> can tiger even play badminton <laughs> okay cool how much time do i have 30 seconds what 30 seconds <laughs> okay, we'll make it uh, a minute Because thirty seconds is too less, I feel. Okay, so I think I'll make two tigers because badminton is a pair game. Mhm. Okay, cool. I think I'm done. Oh, already? <laughs> already? I'm not done. <laughs> Okay, I'm done. Yeah, I'm done too. <laughs> All right, so uh, we'll start with Ansh. Can you explain what's going on? Okay, cool. So I have made two tigers. This is a merry-go-round. This is a roller coaster, okay. and there's a shuttlecock in the middle. And these are the badminton racket, and a bit stripes for the tigers as well. That's great. Okay, I want to call it go with Why order. Why is it funny? Okay, it's just a cloud. It's just a cloud cloud. I'm really bad at drawing. It looks like and then I try to draw a tiger. Kind of looks like a cat, but like yeah, and there's a net. So yeah. <laughs> so I've also drawn a tiger. If you can see, yeah, that's a tiger with the stripes, and this is a badminton racket and the cock. And I tried to draw the. You know the shape. Yeah, that's the thing. The circus. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that was really fun. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, yes. Yeah, so I think this is the end of it. Thank you so much for joining us. It was a pleasure having you here. 
Thank I you. I mean, Hello. really had a good time. So, okay, they're requesting one more round. One more round. People are requesting for one more round. Okay, we'll we'll go for one more round. Okay, fine. Um, let's start with Avant Avantika this time. What okay. is your uh, favorite? No, how about give me a profession, any profession. Doctor. Okay, a doctor. And um, Ansh, what is your favorite pastime? Watching movies. Okay. Okay. And what's your favorite food? Um, popcorn. Popcorn. Okay. I mean, it matches. So. <laughs> okay. So um, it's a doctor. Watching movies while eating popcorn. Oh, let's go. This time, because thirty seconds is too short, and your time starts now. Okay. Okay, cool. I'm done. I think it's the anxiety that's making me perform so quickly. <laughs> okay, I think is everyone done? There's five seconds left. So, if you want to make it clear, <laughs> okay, time's up. So, yeah, I want to tell you something. Oh God! Okay, yeah. <laughs> Can I see Mr. Drawing? It's that. So, I tried to draw the stethoscope. It's not really clear, but he's eating popcorn and watching, <laughs> watching. <laughs> That's actually pretty good. Uh, Ansh, what about you? Okay. Ansh, yeah. So I have made a doctor with a stethoscope. Oh, right? that's great! Popcorn and then there's Netflix playing on the computer system. I I also made something similar. Uh, I also have Netflix going here. I don't think you can see it. Oh, and yeah, there's a Netflix. Yes. <laughs> and he's sitting wow. on a chair that is supposed to be a chair, but it's just a box right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that was really fun. <laughs> so I think that's about it, right? I don't should we play another round? I think <laughs> it should be fine. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I think we're yeah. done for the day. Yeah. So thank you so much for joining <laughs> us. Thank you, thank you. Uh, it was really fun talking to you. We learned a lot. Thank you so much. So Bye. yeah, that's that's about it then. Stay safe. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.